Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It is April 13th, 2024. We are in the Old Testament book of Isaiah, and we're going to read chapter 9, verse 1 through 7. Short little passage, but a powerful one. Packs a lot in here. Uh, Isaiah is returning to the latter days and with his prophecies and the ultimate solution for the disobedience that's going on in Ahaz in, in Judah. Uh, we, we saw that, yeah, he, he, he's very much told the people of that time, you, you know, you're going to go into exile because you're disobedient and you're going to be, learn some lessons and then God's going to pull you out as a remnant. But there's a time coming where God is going to restore his people and it's going to be more than a remnant. And that's when we get our Messiah or Jesus as Christians have come to know him. And this is one of the sections that points directly to the Messiah, um, directly to Jesus, who is the only person who fulfilled these requirements of the Messiah. And again, very specific things that, that had to come to pe come to pass to fulfill this, and Jesus fulfills them all. Uh, we see in here, as Isaiah is running through names, he calls him Mighty God, the Father. So there's no doubt that, that the Messiah that Isaiah is talking about is God himself. So this idea that, well, Jesus was a really good teacher, but he never really, you know, there's no evidence that he was God. No, he was God. So that If he's not, he didn't fulfill the scripture. He didn't fulfill the prophecy. And if he didn't fulfill the prophecy, well, then, then we're in trouble. Okay. Uh, we also see that the, the mystery is there. So the, so the people who originally heard this didn't quite understand you know, the, the full implications of the Messiah. They also didn't quite grasp that, that this is going to go beyond the Jews. This is going to everybody. When he says everybody, he means everybody, including the Gentiles, which not to fault them. That's, I mean, that, that was their belief system. It took Jesus and, and us looking back to be able to see that. So let's go ahead and we're just going to get right to it. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 1 through 7. Nevertheless the gloom will not be upon her who is distressed as when at first he lightly esteemed the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali and afterward more heavily oppressed her. By the way of the sea beyond the Jordan in Galilee of the Gentiles the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death upon them a light has shined. You have multiplied the nation and increased its joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest. As men rejoice when they divide the spoil, for you have broken the yoke of this his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every warrior's sandal from the noisy battle and garments rolled in blood will be used for burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward even forever the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Thank God for his word and may God bless you. Bye.